I'm Sam Albert, and I am putting a Ferrari motor into my rally car. So if you're new to this channel, uh, I race stage rally in North America, both in the United States and Canada, and have been mostly campaigning in this car right here, a 2004 Subaru WRX STI. And um, I've basically been looking for ways to increase the performance out of this car. Uh, the stage rallies in North America are pretty fast and wide open. And, um, power is a big component of what makes you quick on these races. And so uh, the reason behind wanting to put a Ferrari motor in this car really came down to what was a good pick based off of our rule set. And last summer I was doing some research on you know different combinations of things that could possibly get me more power. And one of the interesting parts of our rule book stated that a motor that was naturally aspirated in 4.5 liters and below had no sort of restrictions. If you went above that displacement, you had to put a bunch of you know, restrictions on the motor to reduce its power output. So things like an LS or an LTU type motor, um, you know, was was kind of iffy. Like you, you didn't really know exactly what you're going to get and you had to uh, put those restrictions on. And I just kind of wanted to go with something that was a little bit easier to deal with. And so uh, looking around that 4.5 liter mark, uh, I discovered the F-136 family of motors from Ferrari, uh, also known as the Ferrari Maserati motor, as they have a couple different variants that fit in uh, Ferraris like the 458, the F-430, California, and some of the Maseratis like the Quattroporte. And um, the big benefit with that is that they, out of production motors, had the highest horsepower per liter uh, in that displacement range. And, uh, the 458 motor is, is very well known and it's won a bunch of awards. And so uh, I started researching and going down that path and um, found a couple of used 458 motors, but they were pretty expensive, um, well north of $30,000 just for the motor. And that was uh, outside of my budget. So um, ultimately found the um, F136 IV, which comes from a, for, um, Ferrari, California. And it's a 4.3 liter, still makes plenty of horsepower. Uh, way more than I make currently and um, seemed like a good fit. So eventually found one out in Michigan and had it shipped over. And uh, that was back in December of last year. And it's pretty much sat in my storage unit uh, up until about June, uh, sorry, June of this year uh, when I was able to get some shop space here at Primitive Enterprises in Tiger, Oregon. Oregon. If you haven't heard of Primitive, they make skip plates and whip kits uh, commonly for Subarus. Uh, really cool place, um, big rally supporters, owner, competes at stage rally, a lot of the people that work here are involved with uh, rally in some form. Uh, so it was a great spot for me to set up shop uh, right here and, and be able to work on this swap and, and do some other things to the rally car. So um, the performance gains, I think, are going to be pretty substantial with this uh, motor swap uh, on, the, on the power side of things. Uh, it does produce less torque, uh, but... Uh, if you compare the graphs, and I'll show you here in a second, um, the power output at the axles based off of the gearing that I currently have uh, is still significantly more per gear for a lot longer duration. Um, it doesn't spike as high. If you look at the, the Subaru side, it spikes really high, you know, pretty low in the RPM range, uh, but then it quickly dies off. And that's not uh, the most useful thing, especially in the lower gears. Uh, it actually exceeds the traction limits that gravel tires have on gravel. Uh, so you can get a lot of wheel spin and it's just not very drivable. So having that really uh, peaky um, motor is not the most fun to drive and it, it can kind of catch you out a little bit too if you're not careful. Uh, there's ways to get around that with boost by gear or just, you know, simply being careful on the throttle, but you do, uh, it, it has some limitations and I think it reduces the drivability. So going to a naturally aspirated motor where the power is very linear, I think is going to make the car more drivable. And again, that added power all throughout the red range, uh, especially higher up, I think it's just going to be a little bit more fun to drive. And uh, I'm excited to see what sort of gains we make by doing this swap. Um, there's some obvious disadvantages, though. It's uh, quite a bit bigger of a motor compared to the uh, EJ motor that I currently have. And it really, the entire motor sits in front of the strut towers and goes all the way up until the uh, the bumper cover. And in fact, there's not even enough room to put a radiator. So we're actually going to go to a rear mount radiator like uh, you see in drift cars or the, the high-end rally cross cars. And, um, you know, I think that's going to actually help a little bit with the, the weight balance uh, issue. 
Um, but at the same time, it's, it has its drawbacks of its own, of, you know, getting enough airflow and whatnot. But I think we'll be able to work around it. Hopefully the motor doesn't get uh, as hot as the turbo motor did. And I'm expecting that we're not going to have to wring it out as much as we did either. So hopefully the, the heat is manageable and, and the cooling system that we come up with will be sufficient to, uh, to keep it at bay. Um, but, you know, still with all that weight up front, it's going to affect its handling. Uh, I'm a little concerned about it. I think there's ways that we can mitigate that as well with some changes to the suspension, whether it's just spring rates or, or changing to the damping and alignment, and all that sort of stuff that you can do to uh, affect the handling. And I think the biggest thing for me is just to make it predictable so I know what the car is going to do at any you know, given moment and I can have confidence and then I can know when I can push it and where I need to uh, maybe back off coming into a corner, especially something you know, like a low speed corner where it's going to be a little bit harder to, uh, to rotate up front. But again, I think it's it's manageable. Um, the trade-offs uh, being that we have pretty fast rallies in North America, it's going to be okay. And uh, I think one of the other things that is going to be really exciting about this motor swap is just the sound alone. Having that flat plane crank and that, uh, that Ferrari V8 sound rolling through the woods, I think it's going to be something that will be very memorable for people and very enjoyable for me from the driver's seat. Uh, so that's uh, another thing that's starting to play into uh, into this motor swap as well that uh, will make it uh, worthwhile. Unfortunately, next year it looks like there's going to be some rule changes that's going to affect this motor. And so th there might be some restrictions that I end up having to put on that wasn't planned when I bought the motor, but uh, things change and just have to roll with the punches. But hopefully uh, they're not too severe and it's going to still make uh, more power than I currently do with the EJ. And... Uh, it'll be all worthwhile. So uh, I'll go ahead and switch over to the GoPro, kind of show you around what's been going on and uh, talk about the uh, past happenings of how we got to this point and uh, what's uh, up next to finish out this build. All right, thanks. So I'm actually gonna split the walk through to a separate video with the GoPro and just kind of focus in on some of the designing that we did to uh, get to having the motor attached to the car. And there's really two big things that we had to design. Uh, first was the flywheel here. If you look on the back, it has the trigger wheel that's uh, integrated into the flywheel. Uh, that's something that Ferrari does and has the, uh, the crank position sensor on the back of the motor and reads off of this. Um, I really wanted to use the flywheel that came with it, but just because of the space constraints and the way that it, the stock one was designed, uh, I would have to machine away too much of it and it would actually separate into two pieces. So I had to come up with my own design here. Uh, it kind of started with having to 3D scan both sides of the, uh, the engine side of things and then the Subaru bell housing and where the input shaft comes in so I could get a uh, idea of where everything sits and get it um, all to line up and be in the right position. And this was designed to use a seven and a quarter clutch. You can see this is the clutch uh, or the flywheel surface that the clutch will engage in right here. And then it, it bolts up into those uh, holes that you see there. On the back side of it, this is the, it, it kind of sits kind of uh, like hub centric on the center of the crankshaft. There's a bearing that for our uses as their pilot bearing uh, on their side, but I'm just using that to center the flywheel. And then you can kind of see there's this little recess and this is where the Subaru pilot bearing sits in to keep the uh, input shaft nice and centered and supported. And that's how that works. So to do the design for both the flywheel and the adapter plate, I had the scans for both the engine side, which you can kind of see here, and then the Subaru bell housing. And basically just line that all up. And I also had to do some measurements with some uh, calipers to get all these whole locations. Uh, some of the important points were the, uh, the dowel pin locations, which if I just isolate this, then um, you can see some of the dowels that are in there uh, that helps to positively locate the location for the Subaru bell housing. And then on the Ferrari side, it's actually integrated in with some of the bolt locations uh, that are these two ones that are uh, kind of on the horizontal axis. And 
Uh, once I designed this and I had a good idea of the width I wanted, I wanted to make sure it was strong enough. So I went with a half inch uh, thickness there. So once I had that thickness, it was on to designing the flywheel. And if we essentially just go use the, uh, what do we do? Go here on the right plane. Uh, we can start to see where everything needs to be to get lined up. Um, both this is the, the input shaft for the transmission, and then this is just like a little part to represent the back of the crankshaft. And um, looking into design that flywheel, it was just a matter of getting the spacing. I wanted to use the same um, thickness of the flywheel as the Ferrari, so I could use the same shoulder bolts for the, the flywheel bolts and getting the clutch and everything and have that modeled up as well. But it's all just a matter of getting it all to sit on the spines in the right spot and uh, be able to mount the starter ring and keeping that in the right location. I don't have all the meshes loaded up right here, but that's basically how I went about uh, getting that flywheel designed and ultimately made that uh, all connect and be within spec and be able to use a hydraulic release bearing so that uh, I didn't have to do a whole lot of other modifications to make this all work. And then this is the final result with the clutch mounted onto it and sitting in the engine. And um, if you've seen it on Instagram, I was able to uh, rotate the crankshaft with a, with a breaker bar and it made the wheels turn and then push in the clutch and it stops rotating. So it looks like that all works out pretty good and I'm pretty excited to see that come together. And yeah. So I think this is all I'm going to do for this video. It's getting a little long winded already. And if you want to see the walk around, I'm going to make uh, episode two, just a general general walk around of the car and where it sits right now and what we have uh, in store for the next steps of the project. Anyways, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section below. Thanks.